So yeah, this is kind of an interesting story. Um, NASA has just been given a couple of space telescopes, uh, are sort of comparable in size to the Hubble Space Telescope. So basically, this was a donation um, from an organisation called the National Reconnaissance Office, which I have to admit I didn't actually know existed uh, prior to this donation. But it's a big business. It's, I think its annual budget is about $15 billion a year. But uh, it doesn't advertise its presence that much because it's interested in the space telescope business, but its business is generally pointing them downwards rather than pointing them upwards. And it seems to have had a couple of spares lying around. Um, and rather than just quietly disposing of them, it did the decent thing and, and asked NASA whether it wanted them. So they, this is a spy organisation? I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't know. So I don't it's know. Not like no. You're breaching, no, no. You do know. No, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I know nothing. It, it, uh, presumably, that is the case. I mean, well, actually, that is the case. If you go, they do have a website, and they do admit what they do. And uh, there's even some history. But actually, if you look at what they're prepared to admit, it's the stuff that was sort of from the 1960s. So they'll tell you all about spy satellites that involve photographic film that then got parachuted back down to Earth. Um, but presumably they're still in that line of business, and this is a sort of a, a, a byproduct of that. Okay, I like them. I'm off your way, guys. Thank Everyone well. makes such a big deal about the Hubble telescope. It's like it's this crown jewel of astronomy, and these guys have just got two lying around, and they've just given them away. Like this thing was game changing to me. Well, and actually, they're they're giving them away because they're not of current use to them which presumably means that their technology has moved on significantly from the Hubble Space Telescope. Even these ones are actually, in some sense, they're better than the Hubble Space Telescope in that they're made with more modern materials, they're lighter. Um, so actually, they're probably rather better telescopes than the Hubble Space Telescope. I mean, you've got to bear in mind, the Hubble Space Telescope is sort of 1970s technology. Um, so it took a long while to launch because, of course, there was a, a hiatus while the space shuttles weren't being launched after the first one blew up. So actually, the Hubble Space Telescope, even when it was launched, even for, by astronomical standards, was kind of old technology. And we're always, you know, 10 years behind the military when it comes to these kinds of things. So it's not so surprising that they have this kind of technology sitting around. Hunter of black holes, discoverer of worlds, window to the universe. They're pretty much the same size as the Hubble Space Telescope, about 2.4 meters in diameter. Uh, they're not complete um, in that the optics are there and so most of the structure's there, but for example, they don't have things like solar panels, uh, they don't have the instruments that you'd want to put on them, um, and there's this slightly cryptic remark that various elements were removed from them because they're classified, so there's some bits and pieces on there that we're not getting. Uh, but it's the basic structure of two telescopes. Thousands of galaxies in a field the size of a grain of rice against the night sky. They're comparable to the Hubble Space Telescope, they have rather wider fields of view, uh, presumably because actually if you're interested in looking at the Earth you want to cover as much ground as you possibly can, as quickly as you can. Um, and so they have larger fields of view than the Hubble Space Telescope, but other than that they're sort of similar to the Hubble Space Telescope. Have NASA said what they're going to do with them? They haven't yet. Um, so there is a mission that's on NASA's books, a thing called WFIRST, which is the Wide Field Infrared Space Telescope, I think it stands for, which is a mission that's intended to address various questions to do with understanding the nature of dark energy, the evolution of galaxies, and also looking for exoplanets, properties of planets around other stars and so on. Due to launch in the mid-2020s, I think, but NASA was really worrying about where the money might come from for this. And in some sense, maybe this is a step towards producing an instrument like WFIRST. It's actually bigger. The, the baseline design for WFIRST was, I think, a one and a half meter diameter telescope, and these are almost two and a half meters, so it would actually be a bigger telescope. But of course, it's always the issue with these things is that you can't launch them as they are. You've got to put a lot of work in, in terms of the instrumentation and getting them up to spec and just paying for the launch vehicle and so on. So actually, they're not free in that sense. And obviously, NASA's budget is pretty much spent. So although it's a useful donation, in some sense it also puts a strain on things that they've now got to find the money as to how they're actually going to use them if they are going to use them. It's brilliant, I, you know, and, and you know, all credit to, to, to this organisation that they could just quietly have disposed of these. Um, that it, it, it's hard to put a value on them because actually if you are just going to dispose of them, in some sense they've not got any value at all. But it's, you know, we're talking about $100 million, something like that. So it's you know, a serious amount of money. And as I say, to their credit, they actually did the green thing and said, actually, we can recycle these and do some astronomy with them. Um, so no, I think it's a very cool thing. One of the things that was kind of news to me was the technology that you would use to look down at the Earth for spying is the same as the technology you would use to look at space. It's not quite clear that it is. I mean, bits of it are and bits of it might not be. If you think about it, if you're looking down at the Earth, firstly, you're actually looking through the atmosphere. 
So actually you've got to worry about, you know, the reason why we put our telescopes into space is so that we don't have to worry about the atmosphere. Obviously if you're looking down, then you've got all the effects of the atmosphere, which changes things a little bit. And of course the other thing is you're looking at something which, at least by astronomical standards, is incredibly bright. And so it's not always clear that you would use the same technology for looking downwards as you use for looking upwards. But at least in terms of the optics, in terms of the mirrors and so on, probably it's the same kinds of things. So actually there is lots of recyclable and reusable technology. So I went, to, I went to this National Reconnaissance Office's website just to see what they had to offer. Um, and I was very excited to see that they actually offered you plans to build your own spy plane. Um, so I downloaded the plans and uh, this is what they allowed me to make. This is the maiden flight of this thing, so I'm not sure what it'll do at all. There we go. Uh, not bad. That's quite good. <laughs>